everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Carrie. Every Musical Theater Monday I make a new informative video. I would love if you'd hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss a single one. Today we're going to jump right into it with some vocabulary you need to know if you're just starting out in community theater. This list is not going to be exhaustive. That would be a very long video and you have better things to do with your time than that. The words I chose for this video are the ones that I think are the most common that new people don't know or don't know the meaning behind or just the ones that you encounter the most often. Our first word is beat. Besides the usual meaning for music, this also is a stage direction. It means the actor should take a pause. When the actor takes a beat, it's because their character is thinking something, listening to someone or something, or reacting. This word is often written in the script or a director might tell you to take a beat. The next word is blocking. Many people know what blocking means, but do you know the origins of that word? Blocking is the precise staging of the actors, their path of movement and scenes. This term came into popular use in the 60s based on the tradition of 19th century theater directors who worked out their scenes on a mini model of the stage using blocks to represent the actors. Sir W.S. Gilbert was known for using blocks of different heights to represent men and women in his opera. The men were three inches high and the women two and a half inches. The blocks were color coded to illustrate the different voice parts so Gilbert could create the correct sonic blend. Green and white were tenors, black and yellow were sopranos, red and green were contraltos. Blocking in community theater refers to helping the actors learn when and where to enter and exit, where to move on stage, and what props they should use. You've often heard the words break a leg around the theater community, but why is it bad luck to say good luck to an actor. Some thespians believe there are theater ghosts or fairies who like to cause mischief by making the opposite of what you want to have happen occur. So phrases like break a leg and mared are meant to confuse the theatrical pixies and defeat their obstinate ways. A wish for something bad will yield something good from them. But why specifically the well wish to break a leg? The widely accepted explanation is that the leg being referred to is not the human appendage but rather the curtain that hangs in the wings, masking the backstage. Breaking a leg means you have broken past this barrier and made it successfully on stage. Some evidence suggests that this phrase was born with early vaudeville when performers waited backstage and it was decided in the moment if their act would go on for that performance. If they were sent on, they had broken the leg. Then they just had to watch out for the hook. Other theories support that break a leg goes much further back, perhaps to Elizabethan England, where audiences threw money when they enjoy their performance, fruits and vegetables for a bad one. Actors would have to bend over to collect their rewards, thus breaking the line of their leg. Going back even further, in ancient Greece, audiences didn't clap at performances, they stomped. This tradition reappeared in Elizabethan England when audiences would stomp their chairs, and again, more stomping would break the leg of the chair. Wishing someone break a leg is wishing for thunderous applause. Our next word is business. This is a small bit of action that the actor performs during the scene. This helps the actor stay in the moment and makes the scene more realistic to the audience. This is an area often overlooked by new actors. An example would be if you're playing a teacher in a scene and the students are talking, you as the teacher would be up erasing the whiteboard, grading some papers, circulating the room, things like that. Or if you're a customer in a restaurant in a scene, you could be looking at the menu and pretending to discuss what to order with your dining companion. The next word is callback. Following an audition, the director may ask to see a short list of actors again. They are called back for an additional audition to enable the director to make his or her decision. Generally, actors will read sides from the show. Be sure to make strong choices to help the director see how you will fit into the show. You might also be asked to learn and sing specific songs from the show. The next one is the word cheat or cheat out. This also is a difficult one for new actors to learn. Basically, you want to avoid having your back or your profile to the audience. It feels kind of unnatural, but even when you're speaking to another character face to face, you wanna keep your body angled towards the audience. This allows the audience to see and hear you better. Dress rehearsal. This is a full rehearsal with all of the technical and creative elements brought together. The performance as it will be on the opening night. 
A flat is a lightweight timber frame covered with scenic canvas or plywood. Flats are used to provide a lightweight and easy to move and reconfigure backdrop to a stage set. Flats sometimes have windows or doors built into them to provide extra flexibility for use in realistic settings. Masking flats are used to hide areas the designer does not want the audience to see or to provide actors with an exit or somewhere to store props. Most theaters have a range of flats made to a standard size and they reuse those over and over again. Next up is the fourth wall. The fourth wall is the audience or the camera. It refers to sort of an imaginary area that you as the actor should imagine is where the audience is. The term breaking the fourth wall is used when the actor acknowledges the audience. I like to think of Ferris Bueller's Day Off as being pretty famous for this. He often talks directly at the camera. And in the show, The Drowsy Chaperone, the man in chair speaks to the audience throughout the show, thus breaking the fourth wall. Next up is the word ghost light. This is a light that is left running all the time. When theaters were first lit in the early part of the 1800s before electricity, the lights were powered by gas. Gas could build up pressure within the gas lines, so running the flame of a ghost light in a theater during non-performance times burned excess gas and eliminated the pressure that might result in an explosion. Though we no longer use gas to light our theaters, the tradition remains intact. More superstitious theater folk also believe that the ghost lights help keep the spirits at bay, preventing them from playing mischievous pranks. Next up is the word headshot. This is an eight by 10 high quality picture of the performer's face. I have an entire video about headshots. I'll link that down below if you want more information. The word improvise means when you make up the action or dialogue on the spot and you don't use a script. This can be done in acting classes or improv shows, but it can also happen on stage during a performance if something goes wrong. If someone has forgotten a line or a prop isn't where it's supposed to be, you might have to stay in character and improvise. This is also sometimes referred to as ad-libbing. The intermission is the break between sections of a performance. During a play, the intermission is normally about halfway through the standard length performance. Most shows tend to run about two hours or three hours, so the first half would be an hour or an hour and a half. Most intermissions run about 15 to 20 minutes. They might sometimes run a bit longer if it's a full house and people are still waiting in lines for food or the restrooms. If there are no refreshments available, the intermission can be shorter. A performance of less than 90 minutes in length sometimes runs straight through with no intermission, although this can affect the theater's takings for the night because then people aren't spending money on refreshments. The next word is pretty important, off book. This is when you have completely memorized everything you need to know for the show. Most directors will give a specific date when you should be off book. This includes not only your lines, but also your lyrics and the music if it's a musical. Generally, the sooner you can get off book, the better. It's a lot easier to explore the material and make strong choices as your character if you aren't holding on to the script. An overture is a medley of tunes from the score of a musical. The overture usually plays after the lights go down, but before the curtain goes up as the introduction to the show. The term comes from a French word which means opening. The next word is Scottish play. Even whispering the name of one of William Shakespeare's bloodiest plays inside a theater is a big no-no. In fact, doing that will probably make most theater people panic. There are a variety of speculations about why saying the play's name in a theater is considered bad luck. One possible origin for this superstition comes from the incantations of the three witches in Macbeth. I can say it because I'm not in a theater. It's believed that Shakespeare adapted these spells from actual books of black magic. This opened the play up to the forces of darkness, which are supposed to plague productions of what most now refer to as the Scottish play. Another theory claims that the actor playing Macbeth in the original production died in an accident and Shakespeare himself had to go on in his place. It's believed that all subsequent productions are now haunted by this actor and his dismal fate. Our next word is Sitzprobe. Sitzprobe is a word with German origins and it translates to seated rehearsal. This is usually the first rehearsal when the orchestra and the cast sing through the show in its entirety while sitting at music stands. A Wandel probe is a similar rehearsal joining the instrumentalists and onstage performers, but as the actors wander through their blocking on stage. Next up is spiking the set. Spiking the set is where you use brightly color-coded and sometimes 
glow-in-the-dark tape to mark where set pieces and flats need to be throughout the show. This helps the running crew get the props and different stage pieces on and off in the dark and find where it's supposed to be. Stage left and stage right. Stage left and stage right is as it's seen from the actor's point of view on stage. So stage left is the right side of the stage when you're looking from the audience. The word strike has to do with striking the set, and that means to take down the set and make way for the next production. On a smaller scale, you can strike an object from the stage, like strike that ladder, in order to remove it from the stage. This is actually one of the dozens of dictionary definitions for the word strike, meaning to haul down, to dismantle, and take away. Next up is tech week or technical rehearsal. This is the part of the rehearsal process where you add the technical elements of the show. This involves a lot of waiting and holding in places for the actors. It's where lighting, sound, and running crew learn all of their cues to help the show come together. I have a video about what to pack during tech rehearsal and show week. I'll link that down below. Upstage and downstage. Well, you probably know that upstage is further away from the audience and downstage is closer to the edge of the stage. Do you know why? <laughs> Theater pros coined the term due to the use of raked or inclined stages. The sloped architecture creates better sight lines and acoustics for audiences, but this also meant that as a performer walked away from the house, they were hiking up the stage. Those are all of the words that I have for today's video. Please let me know down below if you know other words that other people might need to know or if you heard a word at an audition or a rehearsal and you didn't know what it meant. I'd love to have this be a resource to help other people so that they know all the words they need to know when they show up to an audition or a rehearsal and they can feel knowledgeable. I hope this video was informative. Please check my channel. I have lots of other videos that you can check out and be sure to hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.